Hi, I'm Nick. And I'm Mel. I grew up playing outside. And I grew up doing something meaningful, watching movies and TV. I never had cable, and we finally bought a VCR about the same time DVD players hit the market. Throughout our marriage, Mel has sadly missed many of my pop culture references and movie quotes. So it's time to catch up on all the films I missed. Well, good evening. Hello. Hello. And how are you? I'm really good. Yeah? Yeah. Are you perhaps feeling well, rested, and not ill? Huh. I'm feeling not ill. Not ill? Oh, good. What movie would that have? When you say that, that makes me think of like a zombie movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, to dream. <laughs> um, no, no zombie movie. Do you know what we're watching tonight? I don't know. You don't know. What do you think, what was one of the most seminal things about the um, the Jaws that we just watched? What's one of the most famous lines in that movie? We're going to need, a, you're going to need a bigger boat. You're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah. Yeah. We're watching the Titanic. A bigger boat. <laughs> You've seen Titanic. I know. <laughs> Have you seen, I hope you haven't seen this, The Poseidon Adventure. <gasps> no, I haven't. I already gave you kind of clues about what it's about, Ooh. but do you know anything about this movie? Um, you have said before that I would like this movie. Yes. And, okay, a million like guesses are jumping into my, yeah. in my mind. Um, Sean Connery? Okay, Sean Connery. Maybe, what else? isn't it? Um, is this like a Jerry Bruckheimer? Jerry Bruckheimer, Poseidon Adventure, Jerry Bruckheimer, <gasps> no. Sean Connery. Okay, keep going. No, this is great. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. <laughs> It's not James Cameron. He does all the... the James Cameron... It's not. Uh, well, he did a boat movie. I don't know if you know which boat movie he did, but he did one. Yeah, I know. Which one did he do? Titanic. Oh, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, Poseidon Adventure. Poseidon Adventure. Adventure. I think yeah. there's like a submarine... Submarine? ...that okay. goes down. Submarine that goes down. Okay. Yeah. And right. yeah, I'm excited. I don't know why I'm excited, but the way you talked about it before like made me like when I wa- watch it. Okay. So it's a Sean Connery movie. And Possib- this is possibly, possibly, this is conjecture, of course. Yeah. Sean Connery movie, there's a submarine that goes down. Yeah. And it's Jerry Bruckheimer-esque. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any other details or clues you want to, or, or thoughts you want to have about the Poseidon adventure? <laughs> uh, no. No? Uh, no? That's all, Okay. that's all my mind, like, grabbed onto. I really want to hear your tagline for this one. <laughs> Um, like for your movie poster. Yeah, 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 yeah. Should have closed the hatch. <laughs> All right, let's know. let's batten down the hatches and go I, check I it out. I hope it's a sub movie. I hope it's a sub movie too. Do you know, what? I've always worried about sub movies because why? If I were in a sub, yes, a submarine, yes, a submarine. not a sandwich. Just to be clear, not what we had for lunch. No. Okay. Okay. You know how the doors are all yes, like higher. Yes, they're higher. Yes. I know. I, I would trip. You'd trip. I know. Yeah. I know. Okay. That's all. Let's go see if this is Let's, Sean Connery in a hope, submarine. <laughs> hopefully, this movie doesn't trip you up. All right. Let's go check it out. I can't. <laughs> what is it, look at? I never saw anything like it. An enormous wall of water coming towards us. In the early morning hours of New Year's Eve, Gene Hackman. Ernest Borgnine, Red Buttons, Carol Lindley, Roddy McDowell, Stella Stevens, Shelley Winters, Jack Albertson, Pamela Sue Martin, Arthur O'Connell, Eric Shea, and Leslie Nielsen were aboard the SS Poseidon when it was hit by a 90-foot tidal wave. Oh, my God. And capsized. The Poseidon Adventure. The most exciting escape adventure of our time. It took the lives of the 1,400 people on board and changed the lives of the few who would survive. Climbing to another deck will kill you all. And sitting on our butts is not going to save us either. Don't look down. The combined talents of 15 Academy Award winners bring you Irwin Allen's production of The Poseidon Adventure, a Ronald Neen film coming from 20th Century Fox. 
Happy New Year. It, <laughs> sorry. I, except not a happy new year. And it's also not New Year's Eve. But we literally just watched a film about probably one of the most intense New Year's ever. Yeah, that was really good. The Poseidon Adventure. Yeah. I so I was thinking about what I thought it was going to be. Right. And I was guessing um, uh, Sean Connery. Yes. In a sub. Yes. I think that's another movie. I think that is another movie as well. I think it might be called The Hunt for Red October. I think there. Have you seen The Hunt for Red October? Clearly, I have not seen <laughs> The Hunt for Red October. <laughs> Okay, that's that's it. Okay, all right. I guess that's another movie for the list. Okay, but this movie, The Poseidon uh, Adventure, yes, the, yes. had mm-hmm. Gene Hackman. Yep. He can save anything. He can save a basketball team yeah, in that's Indiana. True. That's true. He and can. he can save a bunch of like a couple people from a, a huge ship. I mean, his yeah, batting average, to mix metaphors intentionally from the basketball movie, his batting average in this one wasn't quite as good. Well, no, it was a different situation. He was still awesome, though. I just mean, you know, there were like 1,400 people or something on the ship. And yeah, spoilers, not all of them make it. Only a few survive. Only a few survive. Man, and he was a pastor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. The whole, the whole, this movie was amazing. Yeah, it was this, this movie. uh, Well, first off, quick summary, and then we can can delve in. Okay, there's um, a large cruise ship called mm-hmm. the Poseidon. Mm-hmm. It's sailing from um, U.S. to Athens. And on the journey, there's an earthquake. Um, and it causes a tsunami. Mm-hmm. And the wave, it's like a huge, what did it say? 90, 90 foot, foot, yeah. Mm-hmm. 90 foot wall of water yeah. came at the boat. And they couldn't turn it in time. Captain Liam Neeson. No, Liam. Liam ne- <laughs> what's his name? I will turn this boat. <laughs> I have a specific set of skills. Leslie Nielsen? (laughs) Leslie Nielsen? (laughs) He's he's the captain. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. I just want you to keep guessing his name. (laughs) It's some combination of those sounds. Uh, Yeah. Um, He can't turn the boat in time. And so it completely, it hits the boat and it turns the boat completely upside down. Completely. So the rest of the film... Is they're in rooms, but they're walking on the ceiling of every room. It's amazing. And then um, Gene Hackman, the pastor, um, he's he's got a couple people who's kind of like trusting him and his leadership, mm-hmm. and he leads them to safety. And it's a journey. It's like they're climbing through the ship. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's I, really good. Yeah, I would say arguably they go in and out of trusting him through his leadership. <laughs> some do. Some don't uh, lose their faith in him. But. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, yes. I love this movie. Did you watch it as a kid or like an older kid, older <sighs> young adult? I want to say I saw it. I, I definitely saw it before I was an adult. I just don't remember when. Mm-hmm. Fuzzy memory. But I also saw it um, in a theater in oh. in the aughts. I believe it was in the aughts, which, you know, the 2000s. Um, or maybe it was the 10s. Maybe in the 10s. Unimportant. Mm-hmm. I saw it in theaters because when we lived in San Diego, there were cool little venues that would be like, oh, we're going to show you three or four disaster movies in a row. And yeah. you could just watch them back to back. This was one of the movies in the lineup for the back to back disaster movies. And it was it was awesome seeing it on the big screen. Mm, I can imagine. Yeah. This movie is meant for the big screen. Oh, I mean, it's literally. It's a huge disaster movie. Big yeah, yeah, scale. Yeah. The sets are incredible. This is like mm-hmm. the disaster movie. Like, Erwin Allen produced it, and he he was really successful at, like, TV productions. Like, he did Lost in Space. Oh. And so he, he did, like, all these kind of, like, for the time, they just seemed really out there, like, well-productioned, like, stories. So he wanted to break into movies and do stuff like in movies. And this, he had, I think it was, the story goes something like he had done a cross, con, like tri, transatlantic trip one time. Or no, that was the author of the book. The yeah, author of the, the book, of the sorry. Book. It, the producer found it and made it in the movie, et cetera. But the inception of the book, though, was like he just he just did a, the trip and he wondered what it would be like if something happened like that. And he just, you know, 
this is like it's like everything with writers like they have an experience and then 10 years later they're like whoa and then it just becomes this fleshed out thing yeah there's two things in the world that give me this like butterfly Mm -hmm. excited yet sick feeling in my stomach yeah one is whales right like close encounters with enormous whales right and the second is a huge wall of water a wave that big <laughs> those like they freak me out but they're also exciting yeah because they're so in a way unpredictable although it's like heading towards you <laughs> you know you can see where it's going but yeah. just like the the magnitude of it so this was like it was it was really like exciting but mm-hmm. scary and mm-hmm. all the feels it was really cool it is a thrilling adventure, as the promos say. When it hits the boat, when the boat gets yeah. capti- capsized, they're um, celebrating New Year's Eve. Yes, it's like right at midnight. They're dude. doing the countdown. Yes. Everyone's like in their best clothes. Yes. They're in the dining room. There's mm-hmm. a band playing. Um, and Ironically playing, mm-hmm. there's got to be a morning after. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, that's when it hits. And so there's like this huge christmas tree in the Mm -hmm. room that's made out of like this metal yeah like framework Mm -hmm. and then all these like um what are those called not streamers but oh yeah tinsel tinsel. Mm -hmm. and that (sighs) becomes their it it nearly crushes them but then that becomes like their way out their ladder out yeah now everything is flipped upside down Mm -hmm. so like they have to figure out how to go up which is down or they have to figure out how to go you know, Down. towards the bottom yes. of the boat, which is now up. They're climbing towards the floor because they're on the ceiling. Yeah. It's yeah. so trippy. Yeah. Ernest Bornine, he uh, was Rogo. And when he like, he had to like lift and help move it. Mm-hmm. And he like muttered under his breath, holy frack. Except mm-hmm. he didn't say frack. Mm. It's heavy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and th- he just did that off the cuff. That's actually in the movie. He just oh, kind of no. mutters <laughs> under his breath. Because... It was a big old heavy thing. He was ripped, by the way. Yes. Oh, my gosh. He's like New York detective. And he was like, you didn't know. I would not want to mess with him. Mm-mm. There were a lot of Oscar winners in this movie, too. There were like four or five. Did this movie win a lot of Oscars? I don't remember. Was, I'll, I can look while we're Oscar chatting. Was he an Oscar winner? He was, yeah. Okay. And Gene Hackman won an Oscar. Red Buttons, I think, won an Oscar. And uh, I think it was Shelley Winters was the other one. Shelley Winters Oscar. was awesome. She, so um, her role, like she was like a, you know, her, it was her husband and her were going to see her grandkid for the first time. Yeah. And um, so she was like knitting sweaters and she was just so much more than, I don't know, like sometimes that role can be such a throwaway part. Oh, yeah. You know, um, yeah. kind of like an overweight matronly woman who is going to slow the team down. Right. That's kind mm-hmm. of like what we're trained to think from like all the movies we've seen. But her she was not that at all. I mean, she she did like she was like mm. in the beginning, she mm-hmm. was not sure if she could climb. and But she kept trying and she kept making it. And. At the end, like there was um, this part where they had to go under the water to go down and under and then up like a part of the yeah. boat. Mm-hmm. And it turns out she was like this amazing swimmer. So she was able to, you know, help and save Gene Hackman because he was like stuck. She was just awesome. Her acting was amazing. And yeah. her role was really, I loved it. She actually in real life was like, I can't remember if she qualified for something, but she was actually like a really good swimmer in her, in real life. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So it was, I wonder if they found that out about her and then wrote it like that, or if it was just one of those like happy accident things. But yeah. Um. So her and her husband were, you know, big characters. And then there's, you said red buttons. He yeah. was a man who had been at their table. You know, you get to know the people. You're on yep. a cruise. You eat dinner with them every night. So he was a single man who worked in a haberdashery or something. I think he said. I can't he even. What is a geeky. haberdashery again? I think it's a hat. That's one of those it's words. For hats, oh, right? ha- why don't they call it a haberdashery? Isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not British. Hey, that's fair. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. he was kind of like this awkward sort of person. Yeah. Um, he was too busy with life, and so he just remained a bachelor and had yeah. gone beyond the age in which one typically gets married. Yeah, yeah. But 
then uh, he ends up being, yeah, Shelley Winters, though, character, it's really cool how she does like, she's like connective tissue. She's one of those people who's mm-hmm. like a connective tissue person, her mm-hmm. character. Uh, it actually was nominated mm-hmm. for like a whole bunch of Oscars. It, uh, John Williams, he wrote the score for this film. Mm-hmm. He was a nominee. He did not win. But the morning after won best music for original song. So that won the Oscar. That was that song was written for this yes, movie? Yes, it was written for this movie, yeah. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. that's cool. Yeah. And um, that was the only thing it won. But it was nominated for tons of different stuff, you know. So yeah. I read a funny story that... Um, Shelley Winters got a nomination for okay. her, her role. Yeah, she deserved a nomination. Yeah, she totally She did. was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, her husband was good. Red Buttons. I... <laughs> I wanted him to to just bust out the vial, the husband, Shelley Winter's husband, and just have the vial of the burp thing from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory so they could all just float up to the top of the ballroom. Wouldn't that have been amazing? Yeah. Yeah. Because he played Charlie's dad. No, Grandpa. I mean. Grandpa Joe, I think it was. Grandpa Joe. Right. right yeah. Right, same right. actor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was awesome. Sorry. Yeah. I wanted to see him dancing. I know. <laughs> well, he. He almost, uh, he may have danced a little there, but yeah, it was good. Jack Albertson. Anyway. Uh, yeah, their group was really good. Mm-hmm. I was going to say something about, I don't know, moving on. What? Well, first off, the the producer, though, like the reason I like this movie so much, and I didn't know why I liked it so much. I'm like a huge, like end of the world mm-hmm. disaster movie, like nerd. That's like, your thing. I love those movies. Yeah. This is like one of the, this is like the first one, like one of the first ones. Like he just kind of made this. Everybody thought he was crazy. It was the seventies. And in the seventies movies were like, it was kind of becoming uncool to make these big productions, you know? And so it's more, it would be more about like independent films that are focused on little stories and like not huge sets and things like that. And he was like, no, we're making this. And there was a lot of crazy stuff. They filmed on the uh, Mary Queen, the Queen Mary which is a hotel in LA now. Oh, it's, wow. It looks like the Titanic. Like it's one of those giant yeah. ships. And they used that for inspiration. And some of the shots in the movie were filmed on that. And they did a lot of, like the deck scene where they're sitting talking, that's filmed on it. Mm-hmm. It's a hotel in LA you can go and stay at now. Let's go. I know, Let's right? go stay there. Yeah. <laughs> so they used that and it, it just had all these crazy sets, like you said. And it birthed. You know, wide birth boats. Anyway, um, it oh birthed gosh. the genre pretty much. Terrible. So, you know, they went on to make, they saw the success of this and just like everything else in Hollywood. Boom, making money. Great, let's make more. Next thing you know, you're watching The Day After Tomorrow. And I know there's a call. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. That's like, what, what was it? 50 years later? Um, there's definitely, I have a feeling you haven't seen more of the Irwin Allen films. So there may be more in your future. Ooh. I was going to say that I was reading um, that this is so random, but Ben Stiller, he watched this movie when he was like a kid Mm -hmm. and it like totally moved him. He went to the theater Mm -hmm. and he saw it multiple times in the theater, which Mm -hmm. it made like a ton of money in the theater. Yeah. Um, And he, it was just like one of those movies that just inspired him and like made him want to make movies like total. Yeah. You know, it just like planted that seed. Um, so later when he was acting with Gene Hackman in the Royal Tenenbaums, yeah, it he made, was like, yeah, mm-hmm. he it made was, $84 million. Sorry. It was, it made a lot of money. It would only cost 5 million. Yeah. So he got to act with him. I forgot knowing that connection. Oh my goodness. What did he do? Did he nerd out? Um, he like waited, got his like nerve up and at mm-hmm. a quiet time he was like, Hey, you know, I loved this movie. It really meant a lot to me. And Gene Hackman just said something like, Oh Yeah. I just did it for the money and walked away <laughs> in his, in his, his own words. I don't know what he said exactly, uh, but yeah. man. that's awesome. Sometimes you just maybe shouldn't say like, don't, well, I don't know. I mean, it's <laughs> never meet your heroes is a saying for a reason. <laughs> um, although I would have been cool with it if Gene Hackman just said it, anything to me because he's Gene Hackman. I know. He probably sounded curmudgeon I, yeah, exactly. Maybe he was just channeling his character from the Royal Tenenbaums, too. Right, because that was like... That was totally like Royals. Yeah, like, nah, snarky, <laughs> snarky, bar, bar, grumble. Uh, so uh, yeah. one thing that was cool about this movie mm-hmm. is that in in the in the moments of tension, in the moments of like, um, you know, when people don't want to go on, 
mm-hmm. there's so much like positive like like helping each other mm. it was really like there was there was a lot of um you can do it i'm here with you like it was really really positive yeah. and not <laughs> in a in a nice in a good way it was what why are you laughing i love because there's so many points in the movie where i'd be like all right see you later <laughs> i just keep <laughs> <laughs> you want to stay here fine i would be like you're not moving and you're sad okay cool i'm gonna get going <laughs> see you later <laughs> but they didn't do that it was like they, they did were not do that no really supportive of each other this little group yeah. of people who were was, helping each other out it was probably the most unrealistic part of the movie <laughs> <laughs> i loved that part of the movie <laughs> i know <laughs> but it's still unrealistic uh <laughs> <laughs> hashtag worldviews um wow what else what did you find? This is a weird question, but I never know how you're going to answer these. This seems really simple, but I always get surprised. So sometimes I like to ask you questions like this. What scared you about this movie? The water. When mm-hmm. you're when you're in a like any there's like a sinking situation, mm-hmm. and it didn't happen right away. They really the pacing of like how mm-hmm. the water yeah. got. I mean, because the you know that's the enemy, right. right? That's like that's death right there. Um, and it, so it didn't happen right away. Like it, mm-hmm. it was kind of drawn out, but when, when there's like any water creeping up or yeah. rushing or gushing in, mm-hmm. that's scary. Cause yeah. It's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. And then also along those lines, like anytime there's a scene where someone has to hold their breath oh. for a amount of time underwater, I'm always like, oh, I'm out. I'm out. I will not do it. Do you do the thing where you like time yourself? Some I like used when you're to. watching it. I used to, but I was like, it was too scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's too scary. Uh, you're afraid you like won't stop because you'll only let up when they let up in the movie, or no, no, I'm afraid I will see how I wouldn't be able to survive oh. that situation because I can't hold my breath out. So long. the reality of it is scary. Right, Got it. Yeah. Not that you're afraid that you just won't. <laughs> you'll stop breathing. No, no, and you not won't that at stop all. breathing again. Okay, good. Glad we cleared that up. Um, Did anything, I mean, you don't typically what? get scared during movies, but like. Some movies, I I've, I, I can easily get surprised because mm-hmm. that's just a convention where there's jump scares and things like that. Um, I very rarely get scared. though. Yeah, that's true. I think one of the, I'm trying to think of movies that actually scared me. I have levels. There's, there's surprised. There's like uh, creeped out. And they're scared. Mm, mm-hmm. I've probably only ever been scared by a movie, I don't know, less than five times in my life. But I'm trying to even remember what one of them was. I was severely creeped out when um, I saw The Blair Witch in theaters. Oh, yeah. Because that was before the internet was brand new. Yeah. And so literally it felt like you were watching something real and you couldn't immediately look it up. Yeah. And there were no smartphones, you know. You'd have to drive home, walk through the dark, drive home, get on your computer, dial it up. Mm-hmm. And then you could maybe find something, but no one would have posted about it because there was no central place to. Anyway, that one. Yeah, it's harder to be scared nowadays because you have such ready access mm-hmm. to information. So are you saying that nothing really scared you in this movie? Oh, you want to talk about this movie? <laughs> Oh, okay. the one we just watched. the one we just watched is that the one you were talking about? Um, yeah, nothing, nothing scared me about this one. No, like the idea of everything occurring in it is definitely like intense. I would say this movie mm-hmm. is intense. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, it's such a sad, crazy moment. It's it's early on. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they you know they just capsized. Yeah. And they're in the dining room mm-hmm. on the ceiling now. Yeah. And there's tons of people there. Um, but Gene Hackman's like, we have to go. And then the ship's bursar or whatever is like, no, we need to stay here and wait for help. Yeah. And um, who are you going to follow? I know. So most people stayed there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when water started coming in, um, they wanted to go and like climb up the Christmas tree ladder. But yeah. then the boat shifted and the ladder fell down and it was over. Yeah. And they just, Gene's group just got out. Yeah, that one's so much to unpack there. I brought this up when we were watching the movie. I'm like, this is totally Gene Hackman's fault. 
He literally wasn't even holding on to the tree that the way that the other guy had to like secure it. Uh, they weren't all going to make it up anyway. They weren't. No, I mean, it was like a and they probably would have pulled him down. Yeah, it was like rats scurrying up at that point because they were just panicked and going crazy. I thought you were going to say probably the scariest part about this movie. Now that I think about it was the singer's brother. Just because that mustache and hair were intense. He had some <laughs> full on 70s things going on with his growth. Um, yeah, that was probably the scariest part of the movie for me. It's interesting that you focus on that. It takes a while for me to. Yeah. And then uh, his sister is just shell shocked the rest of the movie, pretty much. Yeah. From having lost her brother. Yeah. The kid is my favorite character in this movie. Oh, the kid is awesome. There's a, a boy and his older sister. Yeah. And um, they were going to meet their parents. Yeah. And <laughs> he knew all about the ship. He'd been reading about it. They'd been on it for a long time at this point. Yeah. Um, he was completely knowledgeable. And Gene Hackman kept listening to him, um, like, a, about where to go. And, and you know, yeah. like, it was great. He was, like, the knowledge man that they needed. He totally knew, like... Who would know? You know, everybody else is like, oh, that's nice. Whatever. You know, no one ever reads the instructions on what to do in an emergency. They yeah. just pick it up and go, oh, the paper's there if I need it. Right. Yeah. This kid, though, he, he had it down. Yeah. Because he read every bit of writing in their room. Yeah. Um, he knew where the hall was the thinnest. Yes. So that's why they were going to the engine room. Yes. He was going to get it out that way. Yeah. And it worked. They were rescued at the end. And they were the only ones that made it out. So wild. But mm -hmm. at the very end, this is really sad because Gene Hackman was like rooting for them, mm -hmm. getting them mm -hmm. along, like doing everything, you know, everything he could. Yeah. And then at the end, there was like the steam valve that he had to turn off. Yeah. And so he like jumped out and he was hanging from the wheel that like closed off the valve. Yeah. And just by hanging from the wheel, he like used his hands to kind of like close it. But yeah, like hand to shut over off hand. the valve, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he just let go. And then fell down into the water. Which was flaming. Yeah. Just it was the it was the quietest ending of a character. Mm -hmm. Like he he didn't even make ripples in the water, just like slipped off and was gone. And it was just like, yeah. what? You're almost out. That was so close. So close. Yeah. Ugh. I really thought when he was hanging there, he'd be able to do something. To like jump back or Swing. anything. Yeah. He he used all his energy in doing that. Yeah. Now, I feel like they use that as the like, you know, he was the minister tending to his flock type thing. I feel like they were kind of leaning into that metaphor. But yeah. he was a he was a pastor, but he was kind of like unconventional. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. He was. He was a man of action. Yes. Yeah. In his sermon on the deck, he was saying yes. like, you, every, everyone has a little bit of, if you have God in you, then you should be, what, what I, was he saying? Like, I mean, it probably, doing things. yeah, it's, you should, you should be you, so, like taking action, doing things for yourself. Yeah. Don't let other people do things for yourself. Don't sit there and just pray for things to change, make things change. Yeah. Yeah. And he told his pastor friend that he didn't pray. <laughs> And he also swore more than any other pastor oh. I've, I've known. <laughs> <laughs> you, but yeah, I guess you haven't known many priests. You probably know more pastors than priests. But. Oh, yeah. So anyway. I'm thinking of the traditional stereotypical like uh, Catholic priest in any movie I've ever seen where they're like, they drink a lot and they're surly and all this stuff. But <laughs> anyway. He wasn't in that mold. That wasn't like his character. Oh, not at all. At all. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I was just comparing the swearing part. That's mm -hmm. all. Yeah. What um, what do you think you would change about this movie if you could? Is there anything you'd change? Um, no. I mean, I wouldn't change the actors one bit. Yeah, they were great. They were great. Mm -hmm. Um, and the pacing was really good. Sometimes, sorry, John Williams, the music was a little bit overwhelming it sometimes but that's like right that's like the most minor of, I, of issues i keep um i keep this movie the one of the main themes sounded like independence day yeah which and i keep i kept noticing it 
And now that I'm saying it out loud, thinking about it, I'm like, I wonder if they scored Independence Day as an homage Ooh, to this. Maybe. Because this is like the first, you know, big budget disaster film. And Independence Day is a disaster film. It's yeah. just aliens are the disaster. Right. Blowing my mind right now. <laughs> I'm going to look this up later. Connections. That's crazy. Wow. Hmm. What? Uh, what do you, I think yep. if I would change anything, I don't think that the Shelly Winters character had to die. Oh, yeah. She just kind of her ticker just. Yeah. Gone. Like after she did her swimming thing, mm-hmm. that was her like last hurrah. I mean, but if you look at it, though, the characters who were the ones who were being uh, sacrificial in their behavior were the ones who actually literally sacrificed themselves. Yeah, that's true. So. Yeah. So are you happy that you saw it again? 100%. This is one of those movies I could watch probably once a year. Oh, wow. uh, Yeah, I mean, every New Year's. I don't really (laughs) like New Year's anyway, so this might actually make me start liking New Year's if we watch this once a year. You were so upset that you realized when we started watching the movie that that you picked the wrong time to watch this one. Yeah. That you would have saved it for a Christmas movie. I would have saved it for a New Year's movie, yes. But, I mean, the whole... The reason I picked it was because of the Jaws, you know, needing a bigger boat and being on the water. And I thought it would dovetail nicely into that. Yeah, it was great. This is a great movie. I feel like we've been at sea. Did you feel like you came away with this with any messages? What do you think the message of this movie was? Um, well, one of the messages was, like, help yourself. Like, don't, mm. um, don't be the person who's, like, waiting for help to come. Yeah. But try to do what you can but for me like what stood out to me is like just the enormous um generosity people had with each other and that's what actually saved them that they were really trying to help and like cheer each other on oh so sweet that's very sweet i'm much more uh uh pessimistic in my message interpretation in this one Mm -hmm. it's we're going to need a bigger radar dish, like a bigger radar set. And corporations are evil. Because so the whole reason they were in a position, I, that's a good debate you could have. Would they have survived and not gone over if they'd hit the 90 foot wall of water and then actually been properly stabilized? Like, because they were, it's just like Titanic. Like, I'm sure they were inspired by that Titanic story. Mm. You have a captain who's being pressured to do things he doesn't want to do. The ship's not set up right. They're not set up for disaster and then boom, disaster happens. So corporations not always making the best choices. Yeah, that happened so early in the movie and then it's mm-hmm. not like brought up again. I had forgotten about that. Everyone died who knew about it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, if you were a character in this movie, do you think you would have lived until the end? Hmm. I'm not a lucky person. Mm. So if this, if my survival relied on luck, no, Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm physically capable of doing what they needed to do to survive. Like I can climb a ladder. I can climb a metal Christmas tree. Um, Have you tried? (laughs) I'll go try right now. Right now. (laughs) Um, Also, like, I, I, I am not, I don't typically like to be the one waiting for help. I'm more Mm -hmm. of like. Yeah. No, we need to go take care of this. Like, no one's coming. Yeah. Um, you also, when we're in a movie theater mm-hmm. and the movie's going to start, but they haven't turned off the lights yet in the movie yes. theater, you are yes. the first person to walk up I... or jump up and run out and get them to turn the lights off. That's correct. So do you think you would have survived? Um, a chance? If I survived the initial tumbling over, yeah, then probably. Yeah. Or I would be like Gene Hackman and die like, just before they get out, I would probably that would probably happen to me, mm-hmm. and it would be the thing where you don't expect it because you're like he let the last four ladies just die because they weren't moving, and then he has a change <laughs> of heart and then he sacrifices himself at the very end, something like that. Yeah, Aww. yeah. Any parting thoughts? I don't like cruises. <laughs> I don't, and it's not because of this movie. Yeah, I just we we've, we've been on two cruises because family has has paid for us which was really nice and lovely yeah excellent memories but um i also was miserable because i was sick right and I, yeah seasick's real a real thing yeah 
as we mentioned last time, we just recently went fishing on a large body of water Mm -hmm. and I totally got seasick and (laughs) I didn't lose anything except slight portions of my dignity. But uh, yeah, I do not like that feeling. You were pale for hours. Yeah. You were so white. I Yeah, <laughs> it, it's always amazing when I get even more white because yeah, <laughs> I'm rather pale in general. Also about cruises, like they're, a lot of it is just like consuming, like eating, eating, eating. Yeah. And there's just like, it's just too much. Like I think about, <laughs> it's so, this is just how my mind works, but I think about all the waste. Like where does this food go when... When it gets thrown away, like, why are we on a boat just eating and throwing away food? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to now that I, uh, you've asked this question, I'm just going to picture that they just have chickens on the boat and they just give all the waste to the chickens and the chickens make eggs. Well, if that makes you feel better. Makes me feel you can, better. You can picture that lie to I'm gonna yourself. Picture, I'm going to picture that lie. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, a, a fishing, fishing charter, that's totally different. Oh, I'm just talking about. You can have it. Okay. You can have it and catch your fish. Can I, I catch fish off short. the deck of the Queen Mary in LA? You know, that'd be a long line. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's pretty high off the water, but maybe. Oh, is it docked? Is it not in, in the water? It is in the water. Oh, okay. It is docked, but it is in the, you know, it's in the water. Okay. Docked. Hmm. But it, maybe on the one side. I don't know. Okay. You should check it out. I will. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well. This was fun. This was very fun. Hopefully um, we don't get seasick with the next one. Yeah. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.